in this session i'll be elaborating further on the regulation of glycogen remember i told you about how hormones regulate they bring about covalent modification phosphorylation and dephosphorylation now we go ahead with the allosteric regulation of these same enzymes glycogen synthase and glycogen phosphorylase now allosteric regulation means they bind allosteric effectors or inhibitors will go and bind at a site other than the active site so what is the effect of substrate now glycogen synthase is stimulated when energy levels and substrate availability are high this is just again for the mcq point of view that you have to know that so when are the energy levels high this is indicated by atp levels and substrate availability is high when when glucose levels are high those are the substrates for glycogen synthase now so in the well fed state glucose 6 phosphate allosterically activates glycogen synthase and inhibits the phosphorylase so in the well fed state there is more of glucose 6 phosphate when there is more of glucose 6 phosphate it has to be stored so it in a uh, starts activating glycogen synthase store me i am enough of glycolysis store me more i am more in number store me it says and it activates glycogen synthase at the same time it tells phosphorylase please no more uh, no more breaking down of glycogen i am there here i am in the well fed state i have come from the diet do not break down glycogen so it inhibits glycogen phosphorylase so that is the allosteric mechanism now in the muscle there is something important that is happening it doesn't depend about the substrate to some extent but more than that there are other effects that are taking place why are they necessary remember in the muscle it the, more than the blood glucose level the glycogen function of the glycogen or glycogen synthesis or glycogen degradation both of them are occurring why are they occurring to provide the muscles with energy and when do muscles need energy whenever they are exercising there is strenuous exercise happening that is when the muscle needs glucose so that is when glycogenolysis has to take place what is what else is happening in the muscle when the muscle is contracting when the muscle is exercising please remember when the muscle is contracting it requires calcium so calcium also has an effect on glycogen metabolism and remember this is happening in the muscles so what is the effect of calcium so when muscle contracts calcium is released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum and this binds allosterically to calmodulin calmodulin is one of the subunits of the phosphorylase kinase there is one phosphorylase kinase this is the enzyme which is responsible for phosphorylating glycogen phosphorylase okay now this phosphorylase kinase has a subunit and that subunit is calmodulin calmodulin what does it happen it binds to calcium whenever muscle is contracting calcium is released so when this phosphorylase kinase is activated what will happen glycogen phosphorylase gets active and glycogen degradation takes place and so the muscle gets its energy that it it wants and this is remember independent of cyclic amp if it it cannot keep on depending upon epinephrine to give it the signal to degrade glycogen so it needs some other mechanism which will immediately act remember that epinephrine has to come and then it has to give the signal to the muscle to increase the glycogenolysis that much is time is not there that much time is not sufficient the muscle needs energy immediately so that is why we have the calcium mechanism by which glycogenolysis can happen by calcium so when muscle contracts glycogen degradation takes place that's a important thing that is happening in the muscle now there is one more effector that is amp what is the amp adenosine monophosphate so what does it indicate when is amp level when are amp levels higher amp levels are higher in a low energy state so this is a special effect that is taking place in the muscles especially when the energy levels are really low energy is completely depleted from the muscle that is when the uh, it is a last ditch attempt sort of by the muscle let me uh, see to that all the glycogen gets degraded degraded and so that is why we have the amp uh, activating so under extreme conditions of anoxia amp activates glycogen phosphorylase anoxia remember when the muscle is 
need not be exercising but there is anoxia due to maybe different conditions but that time also the muscle cells need energy you are not exercising so there is no release of calcium it needs one more mechanism and that mechanism is amp amp is really is mainly related to anoxia under extreme conditions of anoxia but even in strenuous exercise as the anoxia increases amp also activates glycogen phosphorylase with this we come to the end of regulation of glycogen synthesis and glycogen degradation both the pathways are occurring in the same cytosolic subcellular compartment i'll go further with the different diseases glycogen storage diseases now where is if at all there is a problem in glycogen storage what will happen they will be mainly present in the liver so it will if glycogen is synthesized more or or it is not degraded more then glycogen storage will increase so naturally hepatomegaly will be there so if the liver glycogen is affected it will be hepatomegaly that will be one of the clinical features and if the muscle glycogen is affected what will be the feature there will be they won't be able to have exercise what we call as exercise intolerance can happen if the muscle glycogen is affected with this basic understanding and with the point of view from mcqs let's go further i'll give you a clinical vignette which will help you to understand one of the glycogen storage diseases which has so many features in that so first i'll give you a clinical vignette a child was brought to the hospital with a complaint of swelling in the abdomen with a complaint of swelling in the abdomen and history of reeling sensation the child was chronically irritable sweaty lethargic and demanded food frequently now on examination the liver was found to be enlarged and biochemistry results showed increased serum uric acid increased free fatty acids and hypoglycemia so what might be the probable di diagnosis and there was no increase in blood glucose even after intravenous administration of glucagon now this is the key word here there was no increase in blood glucose even after intravenous administration of glucagon what does it mean what is glucagon supposed to do glucagon is supposed to increase the glycogenolysis so it is to supposed to bring about increase the blood glucose levels if glucagon is injected so here in this person this is not happening why liver glycogenolysis has been affected it is nothing to do with the muscle it is everything to do with the liver so what's happening this probable diagnosis is one of the glycogen storage disease known as the von gerks disease so let me tell you a few of the biochemical factors and the bio what is the cause for all of this von gerks disease is a very important disease so in this condition what is happening please look here what is happening what is the defective enzyme in von gerks disease it is glucose 6 phosphatase von gerks disease is type 1 glycogen storage disorder type 1a to be precise type 1a glycogen storage disorder in which glucose 6 phosphatase enzyme is not there so what will happen is glucose 6 phosphate which is from from glycogen is not converted to glucose as i have shown here there is a block in the conversion of glucose 6 phosphate to glucose so what it will lead to decreased glucose what is this hypoglycemia so what it will lead to especially fasting hypoglycemia neonatal fasting uh, hypoglycemia so the child may start crying in the early mornings because that is a time when glycogen is going to be degraded and providing the uh, glucose that is necessary for the maintaining the blood glucose so when the blood glucose levels go down we call it fasting hypoglycemia and as hypoglycemia persists even after iv glucagon because there is no conversion of glucose 6 phosphate to glucose so what the next question that comes is when glucose is low well there will be increased fat catabolism what will happen the body needs some other way to provide it energy so it decides to go in for fat i am having 
having enough fat stores let me start utilizing fat so there will be increased fat catabolism so there will be increase in the level of free fatty acids so from the adipose tissue fatty acids are mobilized increased free fatty acid and that is why these people will have these kids these uh, persons will have hyperlipidemia now one more thing that is happening is whenever an enzyme is blocked there will be increase in the glucose 6 phosphate also increases it is not going down here so the pathway the substrate will increase increase glucose 6 phosphate so what this glucose 6 phosphate gets shunted into what into the hmp shunt so what will happen as i have told already there is increase in the production of nadph or in the production of pentose body sees which one to produce nadph is adequate so it will keep on producing pentose so there is increased production of pentose via the hmp shunt so what it will lead to increased purine formation so what it will lead to increased purine degradation and finally to increased uric acid so if you look in monkers they will be having not only hyperlipidemia they will be having increased uric acid now another thing is happening whenever there is glucose 6 phosphate is increased it will lead to for stimulation of the substrate is more so glycogen synthase will be active when glycogen synthase is active it will lead to deposition of abnormal glycogen remember the glycogen keeps on accumulating in the cytosol of the hepatocytes so there is deposition of more and more glycogen at the same time it is not getting degraded even if it gets degraded it cannot form glucose so it will lead to abnormal deposition of glycogen a glycogen storage disease and this will lead to hepatomegaly hepatomegaly so what it will lead to abdominal swelling so these are the clinical features that can be seen in von kirk's disease and the biochemical basis for all the clinical features now here i have put out the different glycogen storage diseases in a tabular form you can take a minute to pause it and look at the different enzymes that are deficient in the different types other than that i'll be talking to you about the different uh important features about the different types and how to remember them now if you look at glycogen storage disease type 1a von kirks i have already told to you it is due to the enzyme defective enzyme is glucose 6 phosphatase remember this is again i am talking to you from the point of view of mcqs important features is hepatomegaly and fasting hypoglycemia there is also one type 1b where it is the glucose 6 phosphate translocase please remember that glucose 6 phosphatase is a endoplasmic reticular enzyme so when there is a defic uh, so glucose 6 phosphate has to be transported into the endoplasmic reticulum and that itself this protein will be defective this glucose transporter will be defective glucose 6 phosphate translocates will be affected and hence also this is also the clinical features will be same as von kirks and classic and it is called as type 1b now there is type 2 pompase i have already told to you it is because of the lysosomal degradation of glycogen which is affected so acid maltase is affected uh, remember this is a lysosomal uh, effect that is happening and so the lysosomes are present in many tissues including the liver heart and muscle so it will have different features pompase can affect different organs and not just the liver and the muscle it can affect the heart and usually death occurs they say by 2 years because of the effect of lysosome on various organs now type 3 is cori's disease this is because of debranching enzyme cori's cd Cori's disease is debranching enzyme. So what is happening in CD Cori's disease debranching enzyme? It is dextrinosis, limit dextrinosis. Again, a D comes there. Limit dextrinosis. Debranching does not happen. Limit dextrin keeps on increasing. This is also characterized by hepatomegaly and limit, and that uh, it is characterized by limit dextrinosis. Cori's disease. type 4 is andersons andersons is due to branching enzymes after a you get b so andersons is due to branching enzyme again there is no branching of the glycogen that is formed and this is also characterized by hepatomegaly type 5 macardals macardals is due to muscle phosphorylase so what is happening is there is no muscle cannot break down glycogen so 
what will happen it is the exercise intolerance that can be seen in mccardles m muscle mccardles is due to muscle phosphorylase then we have the type 6 which is hers hers is because of liver phosphorylase her liver phosphorylase so again it is a phosphorylase so glycogen degradation is not taking place again this is characterized by hypoglycemia then we have the type 7 tauris which is due to muscle phosphofructokinase again here there is increased glycogen there is type 8 and type 9 but right now what is important are these enzymes which can be asked in the in the mcqs type 1a glucose 6 phosphate translocase acid maltase debranching branching muscle phosphorylase liver phosphorylase and muscle phosphofructokinase these are the different glycogen storage disorders and their important features so with this we come to the end of this session on the different glycogen storage diseases and the regulation of glycogen metabolism we come to the end of glycogen metabolism thank you